Is it okay to question God? We're going to be talking about that on this episode of the Driving with Rob podcast. This is Rob, and I'm back in the truck again, so you're going to be able to hear all the road noise and the tire noise. You may hear other vehicles. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about today, is it okay to question God? Now, I'm not talking about questioning the existence of God. I'm talking about believers People who do believe in God. People who believe God is real. And I happen to be one of those people. You know, back during the late 60s and early 70s, during the hippie movement, there was a phrase that went around. I think they actually printed it on t-shirts and bumper stickers that said, question authority. As a command, not a question. Question authority. Well, when you question God... You are questioning the ultimate authority. And I have a good friend of mine named Donna. And we talked about it, I think, on Facebook. Because I think she had posted something about questioning God. Was it ever okay to question God? You know, like saying to God, are you sure? Lord, Lord, are you sure this is the right course? Are you sure you know what you're doing? I mean, it sounds blasphemous when you say it out loud. God, are you sure? This can't be right. Are you sure this is what you want me to do? Well, there is a precedent for it. As a matter of fact, a number of precedents for it in the Bible where people question God. We're coming up on the Easter and Passover time right now. One of the prime examples of a great hero or leader in the Bible questioning God was Moses. Just before the Exodus, as the story goes, you may remember, 40 days, 40 nights, Moses was out in the Sinai Desert, out in the wilderness. And he sees a burning bush. Well, he goes to the burning bush and God speaks to him out of the bush. And God tells Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. I mean, you can almost see Moses looking around behind him. Me? You want me to go? Yes, Moses, I want you to go. And Moses argues with God and says, surely you don't mean me. Surely you mean somebody else. Because Moses, depending on which Bible scholar you speak to, some Bible scholars will say that Moses probably had a speech impediment. Maybe he was a stutterer. Maybe he had a profound speech impediment. And Moses says, God, surely, surely, you don't mean me. And God said, yes, Moses, you, you, I'm picking you. And you know, one of the sermons that comes out of that story is when God picks you for a job, he will equip you for that job. He will give you everything you need to do that job. But he picked Moses. Moses said, surely, not me. The story of Adam. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden and God called him out on it, Adam says, oh no, it wasn't me. It was this woman you gave me. Basically saying, God, this is really your fault, if you think about it. He questioned God. And that's basically what all sin is, is questioning God. That you have a better way, that you have a better idea than God has. God doesn't know what's best for me. I know what's best for me. That's basically what you're saying when you question God. There was a book that came out around 1980, 81. And the title of the book was When Bad Things Happen to Good People. You maybe read it. I read it. It was written by a Jewish rabbi. 
I can't remember his name. His name escapes me right now. But it was written by a Jewish rabbi. And in the book, he tells about how he knew all the things you're supposed to say as a counselor. He had been trained to be a rabbi, to lead a congregation of people. And part of his training was how to counsel other people. When they're having problems in their lives and they don't know where else to turn and they go to the rabbi for spiritual guidance, he was supposed to be equipped with all the answers. So he'd had all this training on how to be a counselor. And then his 12-year-old son died. And in the book, he talks about how he had to reconcile his anger against God because he was angry with God. God, I am one of your servants. How could you do this to me? How could you let my son die after all I've done for you? God, surely you made a mistake. And he talks about the grieving process and how when other people tried to counsel him, how hollow and meaningless all the words that the professional counselors used sounded when they were being used on him. And how he felt a little guilty for all the years that he had told people this is God's will. Because when people started saying it to him, those comforting words gave him very little comfort. But I think just like in the case of Adam, that God gives us free will to decide if we want to do the right thing or not. If we want to follow the leading of the Lord or not. I think God gives us that choice. And obviously, as a Christian, I have to say, not following God is the wrong choice. But God gives you the choice. You don't have to follow. You don't have to do what God says. You don't have to do what's best for you. God gives you the freedom to choose the wrong thing. And sometimes we do choose the wrong thing. And quite often when we're questioning God, it's because we chose the wrong thing. There's a passage of scripture that says, To knoweth to do good and to do it not. To him it is a sin. So you don't even have to do the wrong thing. You can just fail to do the right thing. And it's still sin. Because you're still questioning God. Should I do it? Should I not do it? So yeah, I stand behind my statement. All sin is questioning God. All questioning God is sin. But God gives us that free choice to question it. To say, is this the right thing? There's a story in Jeremiah. I don't remember chapter and verse. My brain doesn't work that way. I can remember all the words to the Gilligan's Island theme song, but I can't remember scripture. But there's a story in Jeremiah of a clay pot speaking to the potter. And of course, it's a story. It's, it's more like a parable. But Jeremiah, the prophet, was comparing this to us when we question God. A clay pot is going to question the potter. You know, it's like the clay pot saying, I don't want to be a flower pot. I want to be a stew pot. I want to be something that people can cook food in. I don't want to be a container filled with dirt. Now, when you get this image in your mind and, and really fully grasp this image of a clay pot talking to the potter who just made him, the potter is like, excuse me? 
do you realize who you're talking to? I made you. I can unmake you. Make another one just like you. See what you have to understand. The potter doesn't need the pot. But the pot literally would not exist without the potter. And Jeremiah was using this example to talk to the children of Israel. When they were rebelling against God and not doing what God told them to do. He said it's like a clay pot telling the potter, you made a mistake. This is not the best use of my talents. Sometimes you have to realize who you're talking to when you're talking to God and when you're questioning God. God doesn't need you, but you need him. So before you question God, you need to fully grasp and embrace who God is. He made you. He can unmake you. Make another one that looks just like you. And that's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. I appreciate you listening. Thanks for downloading. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And if you like the Driving with Rob podcast, tell all your friends I like it, and I think you will too. I would appreciate it. Thanks again. I'll talk to you next time. Bye now. Bye now.